Hello from team Train and Track. Our team consists of myself, Chon Bing, from Nian Polytechnic, Professor So Chu Bing from Singapore Institute of Technology, and Mr. Tan Tong Tak from SBS Transit, Singapore. Our project is titled Inspection of Current Collector Devices for Trains. In this work, we explore the use of depth cameras and AI models to identify collector shoes on the train and capture depth data and high-resolution images for subsequent condition analysis and monitoring. One hour missing collector shoes can be identified for replacement when they are scheduled to return to the train depot for maintenance. By continuously monitoring the wear, a condition-based maintenance regime can then be adopted instead of schedule-based, which relieves the inspection burden on the maintenance personnel and optimizes resources based on case priorities. As shown here, the collector shoe can be easily distinguished from the body of the train using a depth camera because it is closer to the camera. This picture shows the setup that we used in the train depot. An OGD camera was connected to an Intel NUC with 200GB of SSD to provide sufficient storage for images. Connectivity was provided by a 3G USB stick to send messages and alerts. The system was supplied by a portable battery source capable of generating 230 volts AC for 4 hours. And all these components were mounted on a wooden platform of a trolley for higher mobility. Data collection was carried out in a train maintenance depot. The trolley was placed along the yellow safety line. The camera height and angle were adjusted to align the bottom of the image frame with the track rail while ensuring that the collector shoe is located along the vertical center of the image frame. The color, stereo and depth disparity data were captured and stored continuously into the Intel NUC and the images were stored in an NumPy format to improve the execution speed and reduce storage space per image. The purpose of storing all the images is for performance verification and AI model training updates over the life cycle of the system. Here is a short video of the data collection in action. The student is monitoring the image capture using her phone, which is connected to the Intel NUC via a remote desktop application. And here are the images seen by the cameras and saved into the hard disk for subsequent analysis. The depth data is a versatile sensor which serves multiple users. The parameter depth sum shown in the footer of the depth image is computed by summing all the values in a depth image. The value of the depth sum increases when the objects are closer to the camera and reduces when they are further away. In this work, depth sum is used to detect the presence of a train as well as the collector shoe assembly. This will become clearer when we look at the depth sum as a function of time. The peaks in the depth sum correspond to the position of the collector shoe assembly. Since there are four collector shoes along the entire length of a train, a total of four peaks should be seen. This number of detected peaks can be used as a check for missing shoes. The relative time between depth sum peaks indicate the speed and direction of the train, which helps to identify the train car. In this figure, it shows a train leaving the depot. The train was manually moved in position before handing over to the automatic train control system. The larger separation between the first two peaks represent a slower manual movement, while the final two peaks, which are much closer, show the train accelerating out of the depot. The depth data also provides a convenient segmentation tool to identify the collector shoe. By selecting pixels within the desired depth range, contours can be drawn around train components as shown, allowing the collector shoe to be isolated. The contour can then be used to define a bounding box to segment out images for model training. This approach will also return contours which may be well within the depth range but are not related to the collector shoe assembly. For example, the red areas at the bottom 
of the figure belong to the train track, which is at the same distance to the camera. These unrelated contours can be removed by employing an image recognition model to differentiate a collector shoe from the other adjacent components. Here is an example of this idea in action. The colorful depth image shows the contours in green. The CNN model correctly identified contour as collector shoe and rejected the other contours. The center of gravity of the contour was then used to generate a red bounding box labeled shoe, which was then applied to the RGB, mono left and mono right images to generate high quality image segments for detailed analysis or color or grayscale image training. The performance of depth enabled segmentation is dependent on the speed of the object. For stationary and slow moving objects, the stream of RGB, mono, and depth are synchronized. However, when the speed of the object increases, the frame mismatch between channels causes this segmentation algorithm to fail. This figure is an example of a train moving at high speed. Due to the apparent lag in the images, the RGB and mono images were labeled wrongly as collector shoe, although the depth image identified the correct contour and image segment. In order to mitigate the lag, and obtain a complete scan of a fast-moving train for the collector shoes, each channel will have its own independent recognition model to identify the collector shoe and the results will be aggregated for a single train. Images were generated and then sorted into two classes for CNN model training and testing. This figure shows a sample of the generated images. Training was carried out for 1000 epochs to improve the test accuracy. The number of epochs for training were twice higher than the depth images because of the higher complexity from the background. With the detection model independently running for depth, mono left, mono right, and the RGB data streams, the detection incidents were recorded along the length of the train. Here is an example of the implementation. Here the program is now scanning all the channels for a match of a collector shoe. And when it finds a match, it will cut out the image segment. The segments are taken from all the four channels. Now the train has stopped to transfer control to ATC. And once the ATC takes over, the train will move at a very fast speed out of the depot. And when it's moving fast, we can see the images are no longer synchronized. But because the channels are running a detection individually, they were able to identify the collector shoe. And when we record the collector shoe detection events from all the channels along the length of a train, we can see that the detection events occurred at the peaks of the depth sum across the different channels. Therefore, by aggregating the detection events around the maximum point of the peak sum curve, the number of collector shoes can be confirmed for each train. And in summary, we have developed a depth-enabled image segmentation method that works very well to identify parts of interest for detailed analysis. This is for objects that are stationary or moving at very low speeds. This method can be applied for inspection of a stationary train with a moving robot that moves along the length of the train to inspect sections of interest. We have also developed a custom object detection model to identify the collector shoe using the depth, mono and RGB image streams. This works well for objects that are moving at much higher speeds where the channels of color, mono and depth are not synchronized. And we have also shown how these detection events can be integrated with the depth sum parameter to identify missing collector shoes. Moving forward, we will look at how we can perform detailed analysis of the segmented images to measure the collector shoe thickness, the pattern of wear on the shoe, as well as the alignment to the support posts so that we can identify the condition of the collector shoe itself. 
Another thing that we would like to work on is improving the capture rates of the image streams because currently we are looking at 3 to 4 frames per second and if we can improve it to about 30 frames per second, the performance will improve significantly. We would like to acknowledge the contribution from Mr. Matthew Ong Ming Kun, SPS Transit, as well as students Chiu Xiao Su and Teo Xiani from Singapore Institute of Technology, who has helped us to collect the data and perform measurements at the train maintenance depot.